Hey everybody, welcome back to the 80 Slashers YouTube channel. In this video, we will take a look at some of the sleaziest films that the 80s slasher genre has to offer. Uh, now, uh, I'll say right off the bat, I haven't seen, you know, every 80s slasher. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I've seen a lot. I'm making my way through them. Um, but I haven't seen them all, so I'm sure that there are uh, many more um, films, 80 slashers, that have some sleazy factors to that I, I just haven't seen. So um, what we're going to talk about is the ones that I've seen um, that you know I can talk about a little bit here. And you know, I as I as I keep going through uh, this this little subgenre, um, I'm I'm sure I'll discover some more, and I uh, I can't wait to uh, to see them because this the, you know the the sleazy slasher is one of my favorite, you know, sub sub genres of the '80s slasher. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. Now, uh, I guess before we be, be begin, you know, we should kind of clarify, at least to me, what you know, what what makes a slasher film, you know, like a like a, a sleazy slasher. Uh, you know, I, I feel there's a few different things. You know, first off, um, the first thing part of it is is the characters like the characters that are depicted in these films you know um just the way that they act uh their you know some of some of the dialogue written for them and just their their overall motivations uh you know we see things like you know performing like assaults um you know some ultra violent acts just some of the areas and um activities that they engage in that sort of thing kind of has the they you know it just gives the characters themselves like a sleazy Feel, you know, um, you know, and and you know, being in some of these types of scenes and stuff, it, it, like it, it results in like usually uncomfortable moments in these films that are like this is uncomfortable to watch and make the viewer almost sometimes feel like shame for for watching this and and enjoying it. You know that that that's the kind of tone and the the feel that some of these some of these films have. Um, another thing I, I feel like contributes to like these slashy slasher sleazy slashers is the setting itself. You know, sometimes these uh, sometimes these settings just kind of have like a, a a dirty, grimy feel. Just 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 the look of the film, the 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 place that it's set in. That just um, again, it makes the it, it makes the the viewer uncomfortable because it, it's not usually um, like locations that. We're, we're used to being in in real life so you know when we when we see these scenes filmed in certain locations you know it it, it kind of has a taboo kind of a like oh I, I would never be here but I, I get to, to to be like a like a voyeur to some of these some of these areas um, so it, it, it's interesting you know um, you know we like things such as like you know dark dark alleys in like the deep city kind of thing um, you know underground subway at like you know two three in the morning um you know dirty strip clubs and like peep show booths and like live sex shows these kind of things you know not every regular person you know uh experiences these things so getting to kind of um view them and experience them through these films it, it, it kind of i don't know it brings up something um it, again it, it's all about like a tone or a feel um and then another thing that these films often have is very strong sexual themes you know of course we get things like rape uh, you know prostitution um incest just other kind of like acts that are viewed as like shameful um, they're usually front and center in these sort of films, um, and then on top of that, when when you mix that, you know that those sexual elements, when you mix that with like violence and the kills, it just that that's really the 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 big key ingredient for me. It just it just mixes like the sex and violence together, and it just creates this this creepy, grimy, seedy sleazy feel to these films it's just um i don't know so yeah that's kind of how i view these films that that's kind of like the feeling like uh, there, there's, there's not one sp specific thing i i look for it's just like i said it, it's more of an overall feel tone it, it's, it's like one of those things you, you know it when you see it uh 
yeah so yeah that's kind of like what uh, how i view these things what what i how how i um classify these as sleazy slashers so let's say it off now so the first two i have out here um you know i i have one of these here that's basically one of the you know the most um the most famous examples of, of, of the the sleazy uh the sleazy slasher film everyone knows this film uh, and then I have this one out here just because it's it, it's the most recent one I've watched. It's the most recent review on this channel, the last video. So you can go back if you haven't checked that out. You can check out my my full review of this one here. Um, so yeah, so we'll start with these ones. So yeah, Maniac, um, 1980. You know, starring Joe Spinell. This 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 is like I said, it, it's one of the most famous. Everyone knows, for the most part, you know, horror fans know um, know Maniac. It's, um, you know, it has a fantastic New York City, early 80s, you know, late 70s, early 80s setting. Uh, you get to see a lot of stuff, like, outside in uh, New York City, walking the streets at, like, late, late at night, early morning type of thing. Down, like, like down those dark streets, the alleyways, down in the subway, um, you know, the New York subway, like, at, like, you know, midnight, one, two in the morning, whatever it is, um... It it just has like the the city the setting in this film has like is a character, and it's very sleazy, uh, and then you get like like a lot of this film is like the POV, um, from like Joe Spinell's character you know like a a serial killer who is, you know struggling with mental illness has some issues like some mother issues going on which is some really weird, it adds to that um, you know there's not a lot of um, like this, there, there's sex in this film. There's kills in this film. There, there's not a lot of overlap. It's not one of the films on this list that has like really strong, um, like the 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 sex kill combo stuff. There, there's a little bit in here, but it's not one of the ones that's best known for that. Um, but yeah, Maniac just has that feel. It just has a fantastic overall sleazy feel, and it's it's great. Now. Um, Nightmare in a Damaged Brain. Um, again, like I said, this is I, I just I just watched this for the first time, and uh, I, I I absolutely loved it. Nineteen eighty one. Um, again, this has part of the setting that the first part of the film takes place in New York City around the same time as Maniac. You know, um, you know, there is. But what's great about this is we get like a pretty extended scene that takes place at Forty Second Street in New York City. And if you're not familiar with Forty Second Street, it's like it was really well known for like. You know, like that's where all the pornography went. There's a lot of pornography theaters. There's like the, the the uh, the peep show booths, the strip clubs. Just it was like all, just all the taboo, forbidden stuff that was going on at that time, and this does a really good job of capturing that. There's scenes in like um, like a like a peep show booth um, of like a, of a woman dancing for men in the little windows. You put your money in, and the window opens up, and you see her dance, and she goes and does acts for you. You see like an extended scene of that, which is filthy. You see a scene where a guy is watching a woman using a vibrator on herself, and it basically shows that the camera just is very strategically placed. Um, yeah, you get a lot of that stuff. Very grimy, gr very seedy looking stuff. Um, but then when you get to the kills. A lot of these kills have that sex and violence theme just mixed in. Like a lot of the victims are either ha having sex or they're completely nude as they're getting killed. Um, the killer almost has like an orgasmic reaction as he's making some of these kills. It's just the whole film is, again, has that slimy, grimy feel that, y you know, it makes you feel like you shouldn't be watching it. But uh, y you do and you enjoy it and it makes you feel you know, a little, a little shameful about that. So, yeah. Um, so these are the first two we'll talk about. Um, both really good examples of, of this little subgenre. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at the next one. All right. So next up from, uh, 1982, uh, of course we have the New York Ripper. Uh, you know, this is a film by Lucio Fulci. Um, now again, now this is a, this is the Italian, style sleazy film uh you know um this one is you know equal part uh slasher film equal part uh giallo um now 
like I said, even though this is like an Italian style, it definitely feels like that European sleaze. Um, it, it is set in New York City, and we do get, again, we get some of that, the same flavor that we get from, from Maniac in uh, Nightmare in a Damaged Brain. Um, I don't know what it is, early 80s, New York City, it's just, man, it just it just has that, that feel, that vibe that is just, um, I don't know, it's something to watch, so I, I love that for this. Um, in, in many ways, I always felt this this kind of feels like a sister film to, to Maniac, you know? That's the American version, this is the Italian version. Same city, very similar vibes between these two films. Um, instead of, you know, Maniac is, you know, witnessing these crimes through the lens of, of, of the serial killer itself, um, this is more of a police procedural. So you're seeing it from the perspective of, you know, the detective or, or the police um, uh, force trying to capture the killer. So it's different in that way. But again, it's, again, ultra-violent, really ultra-violent at times. There is a lot of, um, again, the, 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 the sex-violence combo. Um, a lot of people are killed in a very sexual nature. There's a woman who gets like a, a broken wine bottle um, basically inserted into her genitalia area. Very, you know, again, like just a sleazy kill, very... Um, taboo. Um, there's like a razor blade on a woman's nipple. Um, you know, it's just that kind of thing. Like, like they they could go and they could do the nudity and they could do the kills, but they wanna they wanna combine them together and make that that sleazy feel to each of these. And and this film does it really well. Um, and then there's just like just a whole bunch of other like just sleazy stuff. There's like like a live sex show. People going and watching people have sex on stage. Um, and it's just stuff like that there's, there's a couple of really sleazy sex scenes with involving women's body parts and people's feet it, it's just it's yeah it <laughs> this there's just all kinds of stuff going on so yeah this is a great example of uh the early 80s sleaze for sure all right let's let's take a look at the next one all right so up next uh we have eyes of a stranger 1981 now this is um this is a little bit different because I view this film as more of a of a thriller that has you know slasher kills slasher elements throughout it. Um, I still view it as a slasher film, but it, it's it's a little different. Just you know, type of film it is. Um, you know, the main theme of this one is kind of this is kind of like a like a rear window, if you know, like the Hitchcock rear window, like a neighbor suspects one of her neighbor or a woman suspects one of her neighbor is like a serial killer that's on the loose killing people and you know they start investigating them and they, they get the story draws out from there and um you know there, there's a little side story backstory of one of the characters who's like a blind a young blind girl she's like the the younger sister of the main character and she has like a backstory where she got like raped and, you, and so that's like kind of a thread throughout the throughout the narrative of the story and it plays into it at the end and, you know, now, the sleaze factor, I wouldn't say the sleaze factor in this is on par with Maniac and New York Ripper, but it, it's definitely there. The killer is, like, a sleazy killer. He's he just, you know, he puts on, like, the, the gloves, and he's just, uh, you know, he's he's stalking these women, and he's witnessing them, and just, just, just that watching a predator hunt its prey, you know, at nighttime. I think this takes place in, like, Miami or somewhere in Florida. Um, it, it just has that... It, like I said, it's a little more subtle than, you know, um, Maniac New York Ripper, but the sleaze is there, and um, especially at the end, when when the conclusion comes, and there is, like, kind of a showdown with the killer and, and, and the blind girl, it's a very tense moment, and um, there's some rapey themes that go on, you know, she has, like, flashbacks to this, and he's hunting her down, so it's, like, the second time she's had to deal with someone trying to hurt her and it just kind of plays up the sleaze and there's just um yeah there's just a a feel again like it's it's really hard to explain but there, there's definitely a sleazy feel to this film um which which i really enjoyed so yeah i thought i would include it here uh all right let's take a look at the next one all right so up next from 1984 uh, we have Don't Open Till Christmas. Now, this is a British film, uh, you know, made in uh, London, London, England. 
And again, I, I view this one as kind of another sister film uh, to Maniac and New York Ripper. You know, Maniac's the American version, New York Ripper Italian. And I view this film as kind of like the British version, you know? Um, this is a Christmas-themed one, so it's, a, it's obviously different. So it's a little... Um, there is, like, some different elements that are a, a little different than every other film on this list because it is a Christmas slasher. But make no mistake, there is, there is this is a sleazy, sleazy film for sure. Um, you know, you get to see, again, the setting in this is great. You get to see, like, the, the seedy, underbelly side of early 80s London. And it's great, you know, you get to see, like, some of those down, like, the, the, uh, the darkened alleys in London, like, down in, like, the underground or the tube, whatever you call it, like, the, like their subway system. You get to see some of that. Uh, you know, it takes place at Christmas, New Year's Eve, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of, um, you know, costumes and, uh, like, the Christmas theme. But it's just, it, it's, again, it just has that, that, that feeling that's, um, that, that's, I don't know, it, it just has a grimy, grainy feel to it. It's great. Um, again, the, the film has a, a really good sex-violence mix. There's lots of nudity, um, lots of violence, and it's, it's, oftentimes it's, um... Oftentimes it, it's intermixed with each other. Um, there's, uh, for, there's one scene where we, we don't really get to see it. We kind of do, but there's like a, like a penis mutilation scene, which is horrific <laughs> to watch. Uh, it's just stuff like that. Like that. It's just is the mean spirited type of kills that usually have to do with, you know, sex parts or whatnot. They just, it, it's what these, uh, what these films go for. And I don't know, it's just me, but the, the British accents kind of help with the sleaze for me. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm, you know, I'm from Canada. I'm not used to, um, like, the British accent. So it kind of adds something. It's seeing these these accents saying some of these filthy, dirty words and these kill these acts of violence and sex. It's just, I don't know, it, it kind of plays up the sleaze factor for me. I don't know, weird. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Don't Open Your Christmas, 84. It's, it's a good film, and, uh, yeah, definitely a nice sleazy, sleazy good time. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, so, uh, up next here we have Pieces from 1982, and this is a, like, a European, Spanish, United States co-production type thing. Um, again, it's... Like New York Gripper, it's one part slasher, one part giallo. Um, all all sleaze though. It's this this film uh, again has a great mix of the sex and violence. Um, a lot of the 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 women getting killed. They're they're either like naked lying in bed or getting changed, having sex. Um, it's just you know they they get killed and they're naked and it's it's part of the scene. You get to see naked women getting. Tore apart, usually with a chainsaw. Um, and it's just... Yeah, again, and this this film, like... Um, um, like Don't Open Till Christmas, this also has a, a male genitalia mutilation scene. Um, it's just, yeah, this, this film is over the top for everything. Like, the nudity, the kills, the sleaze. Uh, this, this, this is a wild... If you haven't seen Pieces, definitely check it out. It's super, super fun. Um... Yeah, like I said, like there's no specific location, like you know, like some of the films, like the New York City or like Forty Second Street. Um, th th this is just more of like an overall tone that just surrounds the film. That's just um, that just feels I don't know. It just feels great. I just I just like the feel the the tone of this film, and you know, again, if you haven't seen it, this has some of the most gratuitous kills you've ever seen it it's fun so yeah anyone who's seen this knows exactly what this is about but yeah pieces fantastic love it all right let's let's take a look at the next one all right so up next we have from 1980 nightmares um, also known as stage fright this is an australian slasher and, um, yeah, this is, this is definitely a, a sleazy, sleazy film. It seems a lot of these films are from the early 80s. I think so far, the latest one we had is 84, which is Don't Open Till Christmas. So, it, for whatever reason, this, these early 80s ones, they just, there's, some of these were just dripping in sleaze, especially these foreign films. Anyway, um, again, <laughs> like, uh, like Don't Open Till Christmas, um, 
the accents in this play a part in it for me. Like these Australian accents, they have a different sense of humor. They have a different take on, you know, um, like the sexual norms and whatnot. And I don't know, I guess it's just me, but like when I hear them, some of the language and the themes talked with those Australian accents, it just, it just kind of seems sleazy to me. I don't know. It's, it's maybe it's just a coincidence because this is just happens to be a sleazy film, but um, I don't know. It kind of plays into it for me. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, again, this film has a fantastic sex violence mix. Um, a lot of the kills occur while people are like, like in the middle of the act of having sex. Um, and you know, if, if they don't, if, if they survive the initial attack as they're having sex and they escape, then there's these long, long chase scenes of women, of, of women being chased out in the streets at nighttime, dirty, wet, dark alleys, completely naked, being chased down by the killer, killer until they get caught. And then they're, they're hacked, hacked and slashed and left bloodied in the street with their blood, you know, mixing with the rain. It's just, it's, it's, they're sleazy. They're just dirty. <laughs> just, oh man. Um, it, it's, it's great. It's fantastic. And this film seems to have like a ton of, of the characters are just, they're just grimy, dirty people, you know, always like propositioning people for sex. If they, you know, if you want this job, do this. It, there's just a lot of that. Like every, every character, every kill, every sex scene is just, um, it just has that feeling. So yeah, Nightmares is a good one. Really good. All right, let's uh, take a look at the next one. All right, so up next, what I have on here is Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. And, you know, I thought I would include this one because it, it's, in my opinion, it's without a doubt the, the sleaziest of all of the Friday the 13th films. Um, and I, I love it. I love this film. Just for whatever. Anyway, anyway, this this film gets a lot of hate, but I love this film. But it, it's definitely sleazy. If, if you haven't like watched this or revisited it, um, you know, there's there, there's a lot going on here. Now, it's not. I would. I I'd, I'd say it's not on par with some of the other earlier films we talked about. Some of like the really super sleazy ones. It doesn't have that feel. This feels. It still feels like an American blockbuster horror type film. Um, but it, it, it's definitely, it's definitely sleazy. The, if you know anything about the behind the scenes, the, the director of this film, um, apparently was, 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 was a sleazeball himself, apparently. It's like whenever they were filming some of like the sex scenes, um, as he was directing them, he would, he'd be like talking to the, like the male actor in the scene going, oh yeah, harder, do it, do it, do it. Oh yeah, get that. Stuff like that, you know, like really weird, creepy stuff. And it went it went noticed on, on like with with the crew and the the cast and crew. So, and and that's kind of the feel, you know. There's definitely some sex and violence mix here. There, there's a few scenes of people having sex while they're you know getting killed while they're having sex. There's a few other people getting killed while they're while they're nude. Um, you know, scenes of a guy getting killed while he's taking a dump in 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 an outhouse. It's just there, there's just like. For a Friday the Thirteenth film, there's there's a little bit extra sleaze that we that we hadn't really seen before or after. So, um, I I thought I would just throw this one in. You know, th this is a, a definitely a mean spirited Friday film. Um, so that kind of plays into it for me as well. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just th th this 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 is definitely a sleazy film. Um, not your typical maniac New York Ripper type style, but uh, definitely some 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 good sleaze. So yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on and uh, take a look at another one. All right, so next up from 1981, we have Butcher, a Baker, a Nightmare, a Maker. Uh, again, this is not your typical slasher film. Um, it's more of a horror film, but it, it definitely has slasher elements, especially near the end. It turns more into a slasher film at the end. But this one, this this is a creepy, odd, odd film that can be really difficult and uncomfortable to watch at times. Um, you know, the the main dynamic here is a is a relationship between an aunt and her nephew, and it's um, yeah, it gets it gets weird. There's some of those incesty vibes going on, uh, which just again, some of the scenes are just really uncomfortable to watch and just kind of weird um you know again sex is a very prominent theme throughout this movie 
uh, and it it's played up in like again in in like almost every sex scene in this film is is really um, played up uh, to, to to make the viewer kind of feel uncomfortable. Like it's not like a fun, um, you know, everyone's having a good time type of sex scene. There there's always some undercurrent going on, which it just makes it feel really weird and a, and a little bit sleazy. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a, there's a detective in this film who's, you know, on the, you know, trying to solve the, whatever's going on in, in the story. And he had some, he, he's a sleazeball. He's, he's like, he's a bigot. He's like a homophobe. He's, yeah, he, he just, every second word out of his mouth is some kind of derogatory statement or, and it's just, it, like, again, it, it's hard to watch. And he just, he's just really sleazy. He just really adds to that factor. Um, there's a, there's like a rape scene, kind of like an attempted rape type thing scene going on, which kind of turns into a murder. So there's like, like, like it starts off as like a sex and it turns into like a violent, it's like, it kind of like, again, it all blends. Um, again, this is just one of those ones that just has that, that feel, uh, that j it just fits the, the category of, um, it j it's just kind of a dirty, grimy, sleazy type film. Um, really good though. Um, but again, it, it, it's not your typical 80s slasher. There's, there's a lot of other stuff going on with this film, but, uh, yeah, good film. Liked it. Definitely, uh, some sleazy moments. All right. Uh, let's, let's, let's move on. All right, next up, from uh, 1987, we have Blood Harvest. I think this is the one on the list with like, the the latest year, 87. Uh, yeah. Uh, this film surprised me with how sleazy it turned out being. Um, I, I, I wasn't expecting, you know, I knew of this film. I knew what to kind of expect with this film, but I, I wasn't um, prepared for the, the type of, sleaziness that it, it had going on and it, it definitely was there is the, the biggest thing in this film is there was numerous like sexual assault like rapey type of things scenes going on and they they weren't just um your typical you know guy forcing himself on a woman on, on you know a woman and she's screaming and fighting like this was like you know drugging a woman so she's unconscious, tying her up, taking nude for ripping her clothes off and fondling her body, taking pictures of her while she's unconscious. Um, and then there's, and then there, and then it happens again. Um, a woman gets again, drugged unconscious, but then, you know, the, the, the assaulter is like taking her clothes off. And like, we get to see like the actor actually like, um, caressing her body like with his hands and with his mouth and tongue over inappropriate areas and it the camera zooms in and it lingers for a long time and it's just like wow like it's just you don't really <laughs> typically see those type of scenes in regular horror films you know that's reserved for other types of films and uh this one crosses the line and it, it's uncomfortable to watch and it's um it, it's weird. It, it's it's weird to watch. It's it's really sleazy and creepy. Um, and then of course um, you get Tiny Tim <laughs> as a creepy clown, which adds adds to the factor here. Like you in the cover, you see this. It's just like there's a lot of rapey stuff going on here. Um, yeah, this film has like a ton of nudity. Um, some of the kills are really violent. Um, like I said, there's rape scenes, there's sexual assaults. Um, like they, some of these they combine again the nudity and the sex and the violence. Um, it's yeah, I don't know. This this is definitely uh, this is definitely a sleazy film. And I, like I said, I was surprised because I I didn't I, I didn't uh, know that going in. So yeah, this is this is a, this is a good one. This is definitely this is if you're looking for this type of feel vibe, this is this is definitely one that has it. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at the last one I have on here. All right, so the last film I thought I would include on here is um, Bloody Moon from 1981. This is a um, a film from Jess Franco. So this is his version of an 80s slasher. And you know, Jess Franco, if you're not familiar, he's kind of known for his his just his overall sleazy exploitation films in a, in a few different subgenres. He was kind of all over the place, but they all were very slimy and sleazy sexploitation type style of films. 
and this one is 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 no different um like pieces this is like a spanish film um it's equal part slasher equal part giallo um the one of the the main storyline has um, kind of a really weird, creepy incest vibe angle going. That's just really weird and disturbing. Um, there's again, this film has a ton of nudity. Uh, there's a lot of violent, really violent kills, really violent kills. Um, there's multiple rape scenes or attempted rape scenes in this film, and of course they. Like all these films we've talked about, there's, they a lot of these are combined. They combine the nudity and the violence. Um, women getting killed while they're engaging in sex, or just they're, they're stripped down naked. They're they're about to have a shower, whatever it is. They're just naked women getting stabbed. I think there's someone who gets a knife in her breast. She gets stabbed in her naked breast. It's just it's the mean spirited. That's just the the vibe of of this whole you know sleazy slasher subgenre and um, this film captures it really well um, you know this being a European film it also has that European sleaze factor it just it's kind of hard to explain it's just it just has that like the actors the direction the dialogue it um yeah I don't know this is this is this is a good film great great kills some um, uh, like I said just sleazy sleazy fun. Yeah, so that that's it, guys. That's um, that's basically the films I kind of like to talk about the most. Um, like I said, there's there's probably a lot more films. And, you know, if if there's any that you've that you've seen and you think would fit on this list, leave a comment below because I would like to know. I might skip ahead or find my way to to watch them sooner or later because I I love this little sub sub genre of eighty slasher. You know, it's um, I love these sleazy films. I don't know what it is. It's uh, maybe it says something about me, but I just. I, just the I like the taboo feeling of watching this and feeling shame for enjoying it and just like the, the sex and the violence mixing together into this oddball um, grimy feeling I just I just can't get enough of it so yeah if, if there's any that I that I haven't talked about here um, that anyone has a recommendation let me know in the comments below because I would definitely like to find some more um, and like I said I'll, I'll probably get through them eventually um but yeah, I don't know. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thought it was kind of fun. Like I, like I said, I just reviewed Nightmare in a Damaged Brain in my last video, and it just kind of got me, kind of got me thinking about these sleazy films, and I just kind of wanted to talk about some more of them. So um, yeah, that's that's why we're here. So uh, all right, that's it, guys. So uh, yeah, until next time. All right, see ya.